Good evening. It's uh, good to be back. I've been out of the country for a week. Um, and it's ironic that I learned a lot about some direct elements that really fit this topic and spending a week in Ireland and, and uh, learning uh, many things about the Irish people, the things they overcame, the just the amazing um, ability to be resilient. Uh, the Irish are uh, they're great people, and uh, I was really uh, blessed on certain levels, uh, whether it was spiritually or, um, you know, just seeing a resilient people. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about 10 reasons to love the obstacles in your life. And I can tell you right now, the Irish had more than 10 obstacles to overcome, and uh, I'm sure they, they uh, overcame challenges with, with a lot of a lot of tenacity and, and love for people. Um, and I'll talk about that maybe in a few weeks um, with people as they talk to me about it. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, start out by asking, when's the last time you really cried? Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you're the crying type and uh, um, maybe you broke it, woke up in a cold, cold sweat even today and or you couldn't fall asleep. Um, or maybe you don't even like leaving your bed. Uh, depression is, is terrible. Um, you know, maybe when's the last time you ask yourself, did you struggle through a situation? Uh, if you're in school, maybe writing a paper, uh, maybe you're maybe having a conversation with a parent, um, you know, scavenging around for funds so you can pay your bills. Um, or maybe if you own a company, so you can, you and your employees can, can eat. And when's the last time you saw such a monster of an obstacle before you and it's scary and it's hairy and it's grinning at you and, and you're coward in that fetal position and, uh, and you're so intimidated. Uh, and if you're a human being on this earth, and as I just talked about the Irish, um, it's, it probably hasn't been too long since this has happened to you. Uh, it could have been last week and or it could have even been this morning. So here's a thought. What if those monsters were not in fact monsters at all. What if those obstacles were actually your best friends, your wisest teachers, your greatest allies? And what if the state of hating your obstacles, you learn to love them? So that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and it's the very idea that if you think of people um, like Amelia Earhart or, or Grant or uh, maybe uh, our former president, Barack Obama, who overcame some things, um, you know, some great obstacles uh, in, 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 in his way to be the president. Um, sometimes these obstacles are blessings in disguise. And so, so instead of cowering before, before them, uh, we need to learn to, to love them or embrace them. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a bunch of these. Um, some of these are going to think, uh, you know, are, are kind of crazy, or some of these might be okay. Some of these might might really um, uh, show you who you really are, and that's the first one. Obstacles show us who we really are, and they they cut us open like a knife. The Bible says the Word of God cuts going in and coming out, um, and it's an exposing moment when we have an obstacle, and it's an exposing moment when when the world really gets a a, a glimpse inside who we really are. Um, uh, it. it yeah, out of the mouth, the heart really speaks, doesn't it? You know, when you're under pressure and you're under tension, um, you know, uh, what what is really happening? Um, and, you know, and often as I as, as I travel or I, I work or I was in the Navy, I learned uh, I learned things about myself in my, some of my worst moments. And some of those were times of loneliness, uh, times of extreme uh, loneliness or sadness, um, times of heartbreak, um, times of really ugly stuff to admit. And these obstacles uh, force us to feel things that are exposed. And that can be kind of scary if we don't like what we see. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, the good news is that once we reveal those darkest things, some people might call us your darkest demons, um, we can start dealing with them. Things that are brought out in the life light uh, are more effectively dealt with, whether they're de dealt with them by by human means or were, or they're changed through spiritual means. But once they're out in the light, they get changed. The more we keep things inside of us, 
the more that we keep things hidden, the more we bury things, they grow into things that are not not nice. And that's why I think a demon is a good word. Because bitterness, for example, is a very dark thing that we don't want to grow inside of us. And the more we let things fester inside of us, the more ugly things happen. So number two, obstacles instruct us on what we need to do next. In every situation um, um, that, that kind of blocks your path and uh, keeps you from, maybe a wall goes up. Believe it or not, it presents a new path. There's always a new path. If there's something blocking you, blocking your path, there's a new path. And then with that comes a new part of you that comes alive. And if someone you love really hurts you, there's a chance for you to practice forgiveness. Ironically, forgiveness is very much expressed in the word of God. But ironically, in human, in the human nature, it is there. You know, we are creating God image and there is a giant neon sign um, that spells it out. And we often try to look aside from it. And there's so many cultures out there that forgive and forgive, forgive, right? But I'm, I'm saying that there is a chance to practice forgiveness, like giant neon signs, obstacles literally spell out what you got to do. Spelling those obstacles that can hurt you most. They reveal parts within us that need fine tuning. They show us things inhibiting your own growth. And once exposed, they show us what to do next. And and how, how, where are we going to go? Ben Franklin said, the things which hurt, instruct. And that's what I'm talking about. The things that hurt, instruct. Benjamin Franklin was a pretty, pretty crazy guy. But he had a lot of wisdom as well as being this really strange dude that did some strange things in, in a time that, you know, there are a lot of people who are living conservatively. And Ben Franklin did crazy things. But he is right. The things that hurt, instruct. And how many times have you been hurt? In, in your with your with your obstacle with your situation but it told you what to do next you know if, if you've had an illness you've been sick and you know once you've been sick that you know what's important you know what the most important things are in your life with your children with your grandchildren with your spouse you, you, you know it's not about your job anymore is it it's about hey I've been ill I gotta get my re my priorities back in order and, and and that's what I'm talking about these these obstacles make you know what the new path is so this blocks your path this way i'm going to go that way i know i know a lot of people have had to retire young because of physical challenges yet they found something new on the other side number three obstacles make you tougher nobody's born with a steel backbone we have to forge it ourselves now i i think that's a great quote by the way and it's anonymous unfortunately um I don't believe we for all forge our, our steel backbone ourselves. I think there's certain spiritual power that brings about change in you, that makes you stronger. Um, that obstacle that ripped you open and, and you suddenly can't deal with it um, and we shy away from it first. No, instead, instead, eventually we look at it, we face it with resolve and we do something about it. Obstacles give you a chance to practice courage. Courage improves your situation, improves your world, improves your family, and improves yourselves. And as we find that courage, we quite frankly, it's awful. All right? That situation's awful, you know? But obstacles make you tougher for the next round. And we're going to talk about more, at this, more about this at the end. Courage brings about perseverance, right? And uh, I should say perseverance brings about courage. And obstacles make you tougher. Number four, obstacles help you focus on what's important. We want to have goals. Um, we need to have um, things that that make us purposeful. We need to know what we are really setting out to do. Um, the obstacles arise tend to seem smaller and more manageable as we focus on what's important and we get our priorities back in order. When we don't know what's important to us, uh, we can't tell the difference between an obstacle worthy of our time and those that aren't. We get, we get concerned over the little things and the little messy things that aren't even an issue, and you make them a big issue. Every challenge on your uh, your your side sides or your periphery looks like a massive mountain you must climb. But once you really look at it, you can see it in perspective. But when you look at it on the side of your eye, it looks massive, it looks daunting, and it looks scary. But once you determine, you define what the thing or the things you need to most accomplish, suddenly the majority of your obstacles reduce themselves to molehills. 
and you focus and you pour out your energy into true mountains of worthiness. And what are those? What are the true mountains of worthiness in your life? The things you need to focus on. Not those obstacles, but the mountains of worthiness. The mountains of things that are important to you. And it's not necessarily the house I'm sitting in or the car in my driveway or maybe even my job. There's something probably more important than all those things. And only you can answer the question, what are the mountains of worthiness that you need to kind of get your head focused on? But obstacles help you focus on what's important. Then they often reset you back to something that makes you be more manageable. I had a young woman come to church a couple of weeks ago. She's so dear to me. And and I I think of her as a superstar. You know what I mean? And uh, And I know she's focusing on what's important. She's done that her whole life. She's got children. She's got a family. And even when things are hard, I know that she eventually gets back to managing what's what's most worthy. And I and I so respect her for that. Number five, obstacles make us more creative. Only in struggling with, with the things that make others quit, those impediments that make others quit, we find ourselves in territory you've never put your feet on. Yeah, you, know, you know, and only by persisting and resisting do you learn what others were too impatient to be taught. You learn it. Why? Because you are going to go through it. And you're going to find ways when all's lost and and you see that obstacle that is the worst thing you've ever seen. And and you try to figure out what to do, but you don't give up and you get creative. And, and you keep climbing higher and go farther and go deeper until you find your way through the obstacle. And, and how do you do that? You're doing it through create creation. You know, if you're an athlete, you know, I have my, um, my customer at work. She's a young woman. She's going to run the Chicago marathon. And this weekend she'll be running 20 miles. She's never run 20 miles in her life. She is running 20 miles on Saturday, and, and, and but she has been building her body for this. She, we go on the road traveling for work, and she's running on a treadmill. She's, you know, she's running everywhere, and, and she's creating muscles and stretching muscles. And that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to say, you know what, I'm not going to avoid the obstacles anymore. I'm going to be creative, and I'm going to find ways. Is there anything more I can do? Is there something better I can do? Is there just something new I can do? Is there some ground that's untrodden that I've never tried on before that will get me over this obstacle? And you, you have to embrace it. Obstacles make you more creative. You know, if you take your time and you be decisive and be creative, you'll find more obstacles. Number six, obstacles help us find and or define meaning in our lives. And I've talked a lot about this kind of already. There's no good or bad without without us, okay? There's always perception. Us meaning we're, we're together. The event itself and the story we tell ourselves about what it means, it's, it's, it's crazy. What's the meaning of your life? What's defining your life? The terrible tragedies of your, of your childhood or was in your childhood. Now you're where you are today. Uh, President Lincoln, um, if you didn't know, battled with depression. Uh, he Terrible depression. Yet the man is legendary for leading the country through one of his most challenging times. Lincoln learned how to find meaning in his inner turmoil by focusing efforts outward to unite a group of people. That's us. And he learned to endure all this, articulate it, and find benefit and meaning from it. That's what I'm asking you to do. Find purpose and relief in, in our lives, meaning our lives, our community. We're in a community together. And I think we often let each other down. I know I've let a lot of people down in my life, and I, I feel bad for that. I mean, it's often that I find that there's only 24 hours in a day, and how many people do you actually not spend time with or interact with or, or help? Re, redefine the meaning in our lives. And I need, I need to do that better and to find purpose and relief and, and a cause bigger than just myself. 
in my struggles. Obstacles remind us that the deepest meaning is found outside ourselves. The, Lincoln also discovered this, that the richest flavors of meaning are found when we stop peering so intensely at our own problems and start looking at ways we can help the world around us. That's Lincoln. I mean, he stopped looking at our own problems and start looking at ways we can help other people. You won't have time to think of your own suffering because there are other people suffering and you're too focused on them. And I know that that sounds crazy. You know, I think I think often and I know I know I, I talk about this. I've taught this many times that that the reason we're going through some sort of trial and tribulation is to help someone else. Right. I why that's crazy i don't want to go through this so i can help someone else right but the fact is that focusing outward helps us improve ourselves inward it's a benefit so remind yourself that i need that i need to be finding my strength and the deepest meaning of finding my strength is helping at someone else again focusing outward helps us improve ourselves inward as well you know you'll find yourself stronger Number eight, opportunity gives us opportunity to change our lives for the better. Uh, maybe an excuse just to change our lives, to reinvent ourselves. You know, I, how many people do you know who change their lives? So uh, there's some people here, I've seen them going by that, that know that uh, I went to school in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, and maybe you don't know, I wanted to be in the FBI and, um, here I am in New England. Um, never, never put a, never, never put a uniform. I can't say that I did put a uniform with a gun on. Never, uh, never actually fulfilled my my calls, young man. Right? Because why? Because because I was I was looking for another way to make my life different, and I'm very I am forever intrigued. You know that something changed my life. Now it it was. It was the way God has changed my life. He redirected me. Now, I was not serving God at that time, so don't think I heard a voice saying, join the Navy. But he had a plan to redirect my life. And I'm intrigued by that concept. I'm intrigued that it can be a tragedy. It can be a disaster. It can be a death. It could be something else that you can't measure. And it creates a massive life change, right? And it could be you, you've been dumped, you've, you've gotten laid off, you've gotten shingles, you've been diagnosed with something terrible, you've witnessed somebody pass away, and you look at the events of life, and it helps you start to reassess, reassess why I'm here. And, and maybe it develops a window of opportunity to make a change in your life. If you dare to do it, if you dare to do it, I have a friend I've been uh, trying to help get find a job he's been out of work and i i believe that you you need to be aware that god might be taking you somewhere else <laughs> you know i mean i'm from new jersey my wife's from england we're not from where my my watch my I, my father-in-law worked all over europe he came to america working uh you know massive changes reassessing your your existence and looking for a window of opportunity to make a change if you dare to do it and now that something has happened and some disruptive event like failure or an accident or tragedy, I'm, I'm just saying use it. It's time to change. It's time to reset sometimes. Now, there's other times where I tell people to stand. Now, I will, I will, I'm going to conflict what I'm going to say. I will say stay where you are. Don't get excited. You know, don't make any big decisions right now. You have too much going on. But I'm saying maybe on the back side of this this uh, this obstacle, you have an opportunity to make your life different. And I'm asking you to use it. Number nine, obstacles can give you inner peace. It's what's up to us in the playing field. It's not up to us about the rules and conditions of the game. Okay, It's what's happening in the game. I played sports my whole life. Right. And I was, I always internalized my competitiveness. I don't know if I'm as good as that anymore, but the biggest obstacles, the baddest obstacles, the natural disasters or economic downturns or, or death, it's, for, it, we can't control these. 
we can't control these things in our life yet in the same breath we are reminded that of the single thing we do have, have control over is what it's our reaction that's what we control i can't control the rules i can't control the conditions of the game but i can control how i am in the game how i am on the field and i'm asking you that same thing i'm saying what is our reaction that single thing that one thing you can't forget it you can't control all those other things there's people down in bermuda right now it's terrible twice they've been whacked, whacked twice okay they can't control that what they can control is how they react right these obstacles remind us that the importance of I'm not, and this isn't like some spiritual mumbo jumbo about to say, detaching what happens to you from how you react. Yeah, you can't internalize it necessarily, but to achieve some higher peace, I'm not saying that. I'm saying inner peace is going to come in how you react to it and where you go with it. Okay, you need to turn obviously to to somebody that can help you, and I'm going to talk about that as I close. Where does your inner strength really come from? But you can't control these things. You can't control these things. So it's your reaction that matters. And you can find peace in the midst of all these obstacles if you turn to the right direction. Number 10, obstacles prepare you for death. Now, I, I say that with all due respect to everybody, including me. You know, we've, I've lost both my parents. Um, I've lost, you know, Joanne's dad. I, I mean, it's been a, and a lot of people. I just buried... Um, my best friend's mother in New Jersey a few weeks back. Um, it, you know, there's no deadline, okay? There's no rules in this. It's, and we're all on a timeline. We're all, we're all running, running a course that ends, ends here. And it's, it's inevitable. It's, it's the elephant in the room. It's, it's something that um, we can't avoid. Um, and we, we have to be armed with the knowledge that, that we can courageously grin back at that. And if you're, if you're like me, if you walk a, you know, a, um, a spiritual road with God, then it's a gate. It's a door. It's a place you pass through. But still we're human. And this earth is, is basically a passing through point for us. And, but why we're still very much alive, we need to prepare... Uh, in our minds that this is part of life that people people do move on and it, it's not easy and it's never it's never wrong to grieve and i you know but but obstacles prepare us for that and we need to know that we need to grieve healthily we need to grieve with people that that are not going to be um critical and they're not going to be they're going to be compassionate they're going to be encouraging and um but we need to we need to prepare that obstacles prepare us for that. This world is is falling apart, and it is it is dying on many levels. Um, and um, so we need to get prepared for that. So in closing, I want to read a few things. So First Peter one seven said, "These obstacles or trials have come so that your faith of of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine." and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ reveals. Some say obstacles make us strong. The statement is not really true without our personal efforts. There are plenty of people going through obstacles, and those who keep continuously getting beat up by the same obstacles never learn nor get strong. But as believers, we have a choice um, to use these to make us strong. It depends on the amount of effort we want to put in during that obstacle. For example, if an enemy attacks your family and um, we have a choice to complain, whine about what's happening to our family, or we can come strong during that obstacle by building our faith. And building our faith is by by spending time and you know looking at scripture, by by um, getting together with a prosperous family. I don't mean rich family, a, a spiritually prosperous family that can help us um, with our family and to get spiritual guidance during those times. So the family is, is there for you. And this way, the next time we get attacked, 
we're strong enough to endure the battle and defeat the enemy ourselves. And, and I mean, this is a crazy scripture. Didn't, did he say to count all joy when we encounter obstacles or counter trials? I believe these words have been thrown around for uh, in all different directions when we are facing trials and obstacles. And they're often, often misunderstood. But James didn't say that, that, that we should have joyful emotion when obstacles come our way. We are not going to be asked to have a party when things get difficult. James is calling for us to to enjoy obstacles or joy trials because he's saying that it's an opportunity to turn to God and not be discouraged. It's about a teaching moment, like I said earlier. It's about a mindset. You know, it's to view obstacles that are for opportunities of rejoicing, meaning that you're going to turn turn to something else for your resource and be enabled to turn to something else for your resource instead of your own self. Spouses cheat, family members fall down with illness, children children are suffering with diseases and there's nothing joyful about those dark days and there's nothing happy about them either. And there's no feelings of joy when we have children or spouses who have been found ill. And James is not saying that should bring you joy and he's not saying that you should enjoy this, but he's trying to tell you that there's something in our minds that we can face in a difficult situation. And there's an opportunity to find joy from a different perspective. And the opportunity is to, to spend time with God during your suffering. And in the midst of that, spending time with God during your suffering, you find more reliance on God. And what happens is there's a a switch that gets thrown and you find joy somehow in the midst of that. And that's what he's saying. He's not saying you manifest it. He's not saying that, you know, I'll break my, you know, I have to, I have to have surgery. I'm going to have joy. Now, what he's saying is you, you're going to spend time hanging out with God during your suffering. And then you find a moment of more reliance. And as a result of that, you find an ability now, weirdly to encourage other people. You know, and and I, I'll tell you, that's exactly what these these apostles did. These people that wrote this, you think their lives are like all hunky glory. They walked away from everything and they suffered. And it's important to notice that James doesn't say that the trials make us stronger. Rather, he says perseverance and steadfastness makes us stronger. Staying power produces maturity. That's what produces maturity. That's what produces you to have somehow have joy in the midst of suffering. And this whole, all these weeks, eight weeks, it's the reason that we've been talking about this. I want you to always know there's people around you. It's the reason these things make you complete and mature when you rely on God for everything. And he'll help you through these obstacles. I, I know so many people have gone through so many things. And the benefits of growth and development during overcoming any obstacle is what makes you strong and what makes you able to do the work that you're going to do. And if you're a mom, that's the work you're going to do. If you're, if you're, a, you know, you're a cabinet maker, you're, you know, whatever you're doing in, in this life, whatever you're called to do, you know, you need to have the strength to do it. Don't ever belittle yourself. You know, you need to do the work, whatever it is. And knowing that, as you overcome obstacles, that the perseverance and steadfastness is what makes you stronger. And that's what produces maturity. And that's what gives you joy. It's not, I'm going to laugh through the fact that I wrecked my car and I flipped it and I have a broken clavicle and I need my knee operated on. And, and what's so great about that? You're nothing. But if I find myself pressing in, reaching out to to people that are wise and people can come alongside me. And then in the future, I'll be doing the same thing and I will get stronger. So I'll tell you, I am, I'm, I've been, I've been thrilled to do this. I, um, I thank you for your, your, your opportunities to spend time with me. The, uh, we eight weeks. Um, this is the last one. I'm hoping that I could do something every couple of weeks going forward. I'll put, I'll announce it in advance and uh, because you've been so encouraging to me and, and know that um, 
I, I say this every week and I mean it. And uh, some of you have taken me up on it. Hopefully more of you will reach out to me. If you're, if you're crying, if you're hurting, if you're, if you're really buckling under, you're not alone. I've said that many weeks as well. Don't be alone. Uh, people care about you. I love you. Um, whether you're here or you're on the other side of the ocean or you're in New Jersey or you're, fr or you're spread across this country, wherever you are, we can get in touch with the other. This is the, the glory of media. If you're local, well, get reach out to me and, and we'll, we'll do what we can. Uh, blessings on your life. And, um, I love you all and, uh, overcoming obstacles. Uh, thanks again for participating. It's been, it's been a joy for me. Take care. Bye-bye.